other day, I met up with my friend Rich, and uh, he had just flown in from San Francisco. He taught the Movement Arts Summit with me on Saturday, along with uh, Chris Flo. So I was like catching up with him. Cardinal rule of hanging out with Rich is you have to take him to get coffee, right? So that has to happen. That's a, that's a nice shirt you got there, Rich. Ah, represent. Brought him to get some coffee, and then we went down to the High Line to check out the new vessel. It's called. It's like this bird's nest-looking thing that opened up in uh, Hudson Yards. Fucking awesome. Yeah, we went and we did that. Just kind of catching up uh, before the summit, I wanted to hear a little bit about what he had going on. When I come into a session, we're looking at, you know, how are you feeling, what are you doing, what did we do last time? And after we look at that, then it's like today's lesson plan is this. Yeah, people who work with me are becoming educated about themselves, becoming educated about their body, and they're being taught how to fish, you know, not given a fish. Yeah. When, when you're working with people, it's about helping them understand their bodies, the body that they live in, helping them understand their why. You know, why do we need to move? Why should they move? It's not to lose five pounds. It is, right? That's such a superficial yeah. goal. How about I teach you how to maintain what you have, perform better with what you actually have, yeah. right? And then you can do more. You know what that mobility work does? It says I have the confidence to do A, B, and C. Oh, damn, I didn't know I had control of this stuff. Yeah. And I can do all this stuff without pain. And then you do more. Yeah. And once you're doing more, now your why becomes huge. It becomes yeah. bigger, right? We got to change this game. And, and it starts with the coach. It's our job to guide yeah. people. Uh, he's always a wealth of information. We ready. Okay. We, we ready. Yeah going we're ready to just do this we're not gonna think about nothing uh, we're not oh my god i'm nervous no 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 we just do how do you do the thing you do it oh wow Made episode. So 
So, so they were looking for people, MTV was looking for people, I get an email, I was like, this got to be fake, like MTV just doesn't email random people. <laughs> but it was a real thing, and I got to go to Pennsylvania and train this girl for like, I think, four or five weeks or something, six weeks, put her through this training. But the cool part was, I had to talk in front of a camera. So the fact that no one gave me an opportunity to speak in front of the audience means I had to get comfortable with a camera in your face, and then comfortable with someone standing there saying, say that again, say that again. So you're like, uh, trying to say these lines over and over again. And then that got more repetition, 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 to the point where I got opportunities to then present. But it took a long time. So the adversity not letting me get in the door, I had to now create a space for myself to do the things I wanted to do. So you have to learn to find whatever's pulling you back, you gotta find a way around it somehow. And that's maybe it's your opportunity to create something new. You guys were talking about fishing the other day, you heard the, you said you can't see your fish this way, that was one of them. can't your fish for But you can't But one of the stories I came up with uh, along those lines is, there was this guy who had this horse, and every morning he brings his horse to the, the river to drink. So he brings his horse to the river, and horse to drink. And so one day he brings the horse to the river, and the horse won't drink. So he's like, alright, no big deal, he didn't drink today. Next day, same thing, the horse doesn't drink. Next day, so now it's three, four days, the horse hasn't drank. He's like, what the hell is going on? So he decides to hide, and he hides in the barn, and he's waiting. And here comes all these kids from the town. One has Kool-Aid, and he's like, oh, the horse doesn't drink the Kool-Aid. The other one brings soda, and the horse drinks soda. The other one brings orange juice, and he's drinking orange juice. And the horse is like, oh, I'm drinking all this stuff all night. He's like, oh, no wonder he's not drinking. He's drinking all night long. So the next day, he has an idea. He's like, all right, gets on the horse. And he starts riding the horse. And he goes up and down hills, and he goes all around the town. He goes everywhere, he's riding the horse. He's riding the horse finally. They get to the river, and the horse starts drinking. So the moral of the story is not that people aren't thirsty for the information, is that they're so flooded with nonsense. So you have to create the thirst. I don't know what that is for you, but you have to find a way that the people you interact with create a thirst for this information. So that they say, oh, maybe I want to learn more about what you're saying. So you, so you have to find who's the person who's giving you the truth, and then you'll want more of the truth. But if you don't create the thirst, they're not gonna listen anyway. So if you have these debates on Instagram or these debates on Facebook, oh, blah, blah, they don't care. They're bombarded with trolls and everyone else. They're not gonna, they're not gonna listen to a word you say. The other final way to help create that zero explanation. This is gonna be our tribe. The tribe dictates the culture. So what we say, what rules we establish, that's what goes. Seven. One. something where you're thinking about it, you have to organize yourself, and then we just, I just told you to go. I'm not worried about your internal rotation and listen to your body, do what you need to do. So,
that's how I apply flow state, and that's why I think flow state is pretty important. That's the end of my little segment. But... <laughs>